Why do you want 10,000 followers on Instagram? Why do you want to make six, seven, or eight figures? Why do you want to be featured on Forbes 30 under 30 list? What do you think will happen to you when you get there? Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast for female entrepreneurs looking to scale their business by mastering their time, money, and drama. I'm your host, Jessica McKinley, founder of What's Happening Coaching a life coaching program that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. So if you're ready to make more money, have more time and handle all that drama that comes with it, you've come to the right place. Hi, Havsters. Welcome back. We have a extra special feature this week. Most of you are probably just listening as per usual on your normal podcast app, but some of you might be watching this on YouTube. So if you've been listening to this and been like, I wonder what this girl looks like. She's got such a sexy voice. I wonder if the face face matches or if it's a face for radio, you can go and check it out on YouTube. Now there's going to be a video attached to this um, so that you guys can really just get a, a better sense of the, the emotion. And really, so I could start to share with you guys and engage with you guys on other social media platforms. So that is a fun little feature. Um, I'm back this weekend after a bachelorette weekend away because I have finally created work-life balance, which is something that you guys come to me with all of the time. Um, actually unplugging versus I need to say this in the intro, um, before we dive into the topic, like if you find you yourselves on the weekend, still checking your emails and going over to-do lists on your time off, it's probably just because you're used to scheduling only your business stuff. And you're not also planning your time off when you plan and you schedule both, which is something that we do in Hapster scheduling. It's a very holistic way of scheduling your calendar starts to match your core values. And that doesn't just mean that you're being more productive, which is maybe one of your core values or the results you want to create, but you're also living a life that reflects the life that you want. For me, that meant, uh, really being present for my really dear friend, Annie, who is getting married this weekend. So if you guys follow on Insta, you saw, we were out, out East in the Hamptons, uh, for bachelor weekend. It was so, so fun. And I will say it did take me almost a full day to get my brain to shut off, but I was truly unplugged and not checking those things because I knew that my Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday were already planned out so I could leave that to my schedule. So, um, yes, but now that I am back, we have to shout out the hapster of the week. The hapster of the week this week is drum roll. I could see that I actually don't have a drum. Um, is Ashley Hoff. So Ashley is a client that is actually, she both kind of had her business and is in the corporate world. She's a mix. She works in TV production and she still though has the brain of an entrepreneur because she has a lot of freedom in terms of the decisions that she can make in her business and authority with her team. And so we, she came in and we worked a lot on leadership and just really feeling like, what is the difference between taking responsibility for my team and instead also leading and guiding them to create their own results. And so I'm just needed to shout her out this week because she's done such a good job of the hardest part in this process, coaching process, which is looking at your own thoughts and making room for you to see where your own thinking has been holding you back. So easy when you come to coaching, right? People are like, this person's doing this and this is not working because that person's not doing that. And how can you help me find out the way to tell them how to do their job better when really always the answer to creating our better results is our own thinking. So we were finding the ways that she was showing up in people pleasing and finding the ways that she wasn't being clearly direct and that she was undermining her own authority and second guessing herself and trying to be responsible for everyone else and for their emotions. And she's just taken it all in stride. And I know that this is the most painful part, but I need to shout her out because it's, it's, this is the difference between my clients who get really quick results and the clients that take 
years to slog through this because they associate the pain with like, there's something wrong with them. And then they want to beat themselves up. And now she's just like, okay, this is what it is. I hear it. I accept it. What next? And the quicker you can go through that high value cycle without beating yourself up, the quicker you're going to get results. So Ashley is crushing it. And I needed to shout her out as the hapster of the week. And now it is time to dive into the topic of the week, which is a more advanced topic. So if this is your first time listening to the podcast, you might have to go back to previous episodes to kind of understand what I mean here. But we're talking about how if the results don't matter, why should I even set goals? I say this to you guys all of the time. You've heard the cliche, like it's not the destination that matters. It's the journey. But why? (laughs) We're motivated by results. We want to be rich, thin, happy, a better lover, a parent, giver, have more time, less stress. These are the results that we want in our life. Give it to me, whatever it takes, right? People, that's why people come to me. That's why people pay me the money that they pay me. But why? Why do you really want what you want? Why do you want 10,000 followers on Instagram? Why do you want to make six, seven, or eight figures? Why do you want to be featured on Forbes 30 under 30 list? Why, what do you think will happen to you when you get there? More respect, more ease, more confidence, less stress, less worry, less loneliness. Let me save you some time. None of that's going to (laughs) happen. And like, this is such a painful realization for my clients that get to their first ever like big time achievement that they've been wanting for a long time, but there is no result you can achieve that will make you feel anything that you can't already access right now. I'm going to repeat that because this is like the core of what I'm saying right here. There is no result that you're currently striving for right now that When you achieve it, it'll make you feel anything that you can't already access in this moment right now. Why? Because our thoughts create our feelings. We think and we get confused about the model that our results are what make us feel things, that that's what creates our feelings. It's not how it works. Now, this episode isn't about me again, just simply restating the model in another way, but I'm going to review it for those of you who need a review of what the model is. It's that your circumstances may trigger your thinking, your thoughts create your feelings, your feelings drive your actions and your actions produce your results. This is the way that the world works or right. If this isn't another way of reframing that cliche, enjoy the journey that, that quote, It's about helping you understand the point of pursuing a big goal, even when you know that achieving it won't make you feel better. Like this is an advanced problem that my clients have. They come to me and they're like, okay, I really get it now. The results aren't going to create my feelings. So why am I working so fucking hard? Like, why am I going after this big goal if I'm not going to feel better at the end? And I'm like, that is a high quality question. And I have an answer for you because as you know, I love a good goal and I am constantly pursuing things that I think of as impossible currently for myself. It's not to feel better. And when you know that you stop being showing up in a rush. And I think that that's really important and it's a shift. And I can see my clients who have really understood that because they're no longer like hustling hard to try and hit their result because they really feel like, okay, there's no rush. We're going to do it. We're pursuing it, but it really is about who I'm becoming in this process. So you slow down to a pace that really feels good for you. And the second thing is it's not to have the thing. That's not the point, right? It's not to have the result because the thing isn't going to make you feel better. Okay. So that's not what it is. (laughs) This is what it is. The point of pursuing a really big goal and setting them is to stretch you beyond your current capability. It's to blow your mind with what's possible for you. So when I get to the end of the year, I look back and I think about January and I think about what I thought was possible for me and how I showed, showed up. And I want to tell, I want to know that at the end of the year, and even at the end of the day, like I showed up in pursuit of this big thing with zero evidence that it was possible. And that audacity to like live in audacity is so fun. 
And I want you guys to know what that feels like to stretch beyond your current capability, to know that you're always stretching and you're never going to be quite there. And once you get there, you're just going to set another goal, but there's nothing wrong with that. It, when you're not doing it out of lack and you're doing it out of the fun of the process, out of the fun of, of showing yourself who you are in your future. And then like meeting her every time and being like, wow, this is so fun. And I can't make, wait to meet future, future us and then future, future, future us. Right. So, um, so then the second reason why you pursue it is to live in pursuit and in purpose. The second reason you do it is to live in pursuit and purpose. So you really want to know that, Hey, when I wake up today, there there's a reason that I'm showing up. It's not like you're not just a robot, which I feel like most people are, they're waking up and they're just kind of like going along with the routine. They don't really have goals. Most people that I meet, even the people that are ambitious that are coming to me, they haven't set goals in the way that we set goals in coaching. And they're like, well, and when I ask them, why not? Most of them, it's because of the aliveness factor that comes with it. They're kind of scared to feel the negative emotions. So they block themselves also from feeling the positive emotion. And when you're in pursuit and in purpose every day, you feel more alive. I don't know how else to describe it. Okay. You feel just more in tune with being a human being and what it means to be a human. The third reason to pursue it is to be a part of evolving humanity and to be an example of what's possible. And I want you to think about that in all the ways, like for who do you want to be an example of what's possible for me, of course, in the, in the like most zoomed in way for my son, like he's watching me every day. I want him to look at me and think like, oh, wow, mom was my mom was a single mom and she woke up and she didn't have money and she believed that it was possible for her to make a shit ton of money with no evidence that it was possible. She believed that she didn't need to get a certification. And now for those of you who listen, you know, I did recently get life coach certified, but not for the certification to validate me for fun, because I knew that it was going to be hard. And I knew that saving up the money to spend 18 K was going to be one of the most stretching things I've ever done for myself. And it was, And it's one of the reasons too, like with any goal, if one of your goals listening is to work with me and you know, that's the biggest investment you've ever made in yourself, pursue it just to show yourself that you can do it. If anything else, not to believe that I'm going to change you, right? You have all of the answers. Coaching brings them out of you. But for me, hiring my coaches and paying more and more money, investing into myself every year, isn't just about what I get when I'm there, but it's about what I know about myself and stretching that capability as I like show up in pursuit of saving the money right now, I'm saving for a second round of the 25 K investment for 200 K mastermind. And I'm like game on, I'm such a badass. Like I just keep thinking these thoughts. I'm like, who do I think I am that I can just like spend 25 K every six months. Like my old self would be losing their shit over like the fact that I keep doing this. And you know, my family is still losing. They're like, she's gone crazy. Like But I know that for me, this is just the beginning. This is just scratching the surface. And I want to be an example, not just to my son and not just to like future legacies of my family. And they're going to be like, my great grandmother was such a badass, right? But also to be an example of what's possible to all women and to like bilingual women and to, you know, divorce women and to all of the things that I am. I want to be an example of what's possible and for humanity, for like future humanity. Okay. So the final reason, yeah, is to, when you combine, it's not just the reason when you combine this knowing that the results aren't the point with the belief that what you're pursuing is already done in the future, you get to enjoy the process even more. So this is that like final step, you guys, once you get into like, okay, cool. I get it. It's not about the results. It's about the process. I can lean into the process. I'm not in a rush. The part that really lets you not be in a rush is when you realize like it's already done. Like I'm saving for this 25 K right now. And I'm about like halfway done. And I don't have all of the clients that it's going to take to 
make that goal. Like I'm going to have to create new clients, but in my brain, future Jess, like already handled it. And it's like done already. And when I go there to that place where I'm like, Hey Jess, like, how do we do it? Like, I'm not in the how greed. I don't, I don't need to know the how I don't need to understand any of that. All I need to do is show up as myself and believe even harder and then take action. Like it feels really natural. Then when someone says no to me, like I have two discovery calls today. If one of them says no, I'm like, Oh, okay. I thought maybe they were going to be the person that got me to the 25 gay, but I guess not someone else is out there. I'm not worried about it. And it like, I get confused though, when the math isn't adding up, doesn't, I don't use it as evidence to undermine my belief. I'm just like, okay, what's happening here? Like, and then I'm like talking to people at the grocery store. I'm like, are you the person that's going to get me to 25k? Are you, are you? And it becomes just more organic and more fun. You know, that you're making, when you know that you're making seven figures in three years, you've gone and hung out with your future self and become so familiar with her thoughts about it, what it's like to be there that you can feel it now. Like I'm already enjoying the 50, 50 experience of being a millionaire right now. Like, I'm like, oh my God, it's so crazy. Like, what am I going to even spend my money on? Like, and not even just spending, right? Like, how am I going to feel? Like, I might find a little bit of like pressure to, you know, show up in a different way with my giving and my charity organizations, or like, I might feel it's going to still be 50, 50 without a goal. Your 50, 50 feelings become more bland. They look like comfort and apathy instead of discomfort, which I get some of you guys are scared to experience, but mind blowing you for you. If it's 50, 50, either way, I want you to just ask yourself the question, which coin would you choose to have in your pocket? The one that's bland. That's like comfort. Yeah. But also apathy. Yeah. Or I know I'm making this one sound really way more attractive discomfort and you mind blowing euphoria. Those are the types of people that I work with are the people that are in pursuit of that type of 50, 50. So if that is you come and find me now, you know what I look like and my crazy office that's halfway between moving to my new house from this apartment. But I hope that this was a wake up call to you about, yes, the results aren't the point, but goals, they are necessary to you becoming the most alive version of yourself. Hey, Habsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to what's happening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening. W H A T S H A P P Y N I N G.com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. Again, that's happy H A P P Y N I N G and book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.